Okay, welcome back to Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. Today on the bench we've got this, uh, well, early 70s Russian radio. It's a VEF204, um, made in the Soviet Union. I'm probably going to do a video on uh, on the restoration work I've done on this radio. Um, these things were very popular back in the 70s, mainly because they were cheap. They were actually made in Latvia. Um, and they were reasonable broadcast uh, band receivers, not particularly sensitive. Uh, but this one is of sentimental value because um, for my 13th birthday my father bought me one of these, new. They were about, um, about £11, about UK money at the time. Uh, that's a couple of hundred pounds in today's money. So they were a reasonable uh, um, investment. They weren't a cheap receiver back then. Um, and they're a single conversion superhead. It's got about nine wave bands, and um, nice, uh, nice project to work on because there's plenty of room. And each wave band is contained in this carousel unit here, which can be moved round. These days, of course, that would be done using um, uh, logic or switching. Well, they wouldn't do it that way anymore. But um, it's fascinating. This is the real mechanical system. And what I'm hoping to do today is to show you how I've used uh, a signal generator producing a swept frequency and my oscilloscope to produce a display of the response of the um, intermediate frequency stages. And that actually is um, handy in terms of trying to, to tune up the radio. Um, I can't afford a spectrum analyzer and I suspect even if I could, I probably couldn't justify one. So this is, um, I guess, a, a poor man's spectrum analyzer. And I really can't um, claim originality for this at all. Uh, but uh, the EEV blog, and I'll put some links down below um, to the various uh, videos, uh, was showing how to use your oscilloscope to uh, essentially display frequency rather than voltage. And... Uh, he was using a low-pass filter and I began to wonder if I could possibly use that um, as a, an alignment tool and I guess plenty of other people have thought of this and managed to do it but hopefully you're going to um, see it demonstrated uh, today um, in this radio. So I'm going to be feeding in a swept IF frequency to the um, just around the mixer area here and I'm going to be listening using the oscilloscope here at the uh, in the uh, audio frequency stages and then I'll be able to use an adjuster tool to adjust the IF cans and hopefully show you that you can actually see the, the change in the response curve. Okay, so what you can see here, uh, the yellow trace, which is in channel 1, is the output um, of the signal generator, and you can see it's sweeping. And channel 2, which is the blue uh, trace, is the output of the external trigger. Now, uh, my signal generator, which was uh, a cheap and cheerful Chinese one, um, sends a pulse uh, every time the, the waveform is triggered and unfortunately what this would ideally like would be a trigger every time the sweep is triggered. Uh, we, and if I, could, if I could get that then I would actually have a trace which remained uh, steady in the middle and would even look a little bit more like a spectrum analyzer. I haven't managed to achieve that with my gear yet. That could be that I, I haven't played with it enough or it could be that it's not possible. Having said that I've obviously got um, only fairly cheap and cheerful equipment uh, but hopefully uh, what I can prove today is it is possible to display the, uh, the filter shape uh, of your uh, IF stages. So that's what I start with. What I'm now going to do is send the blue trace into the external trigger input on the scope and I'm going to adjust the uh, output of the uh, channel 1 uh, so that you're seeing half of the signal. The bottom half is just off the screen and hopefully it will then start to look a little bit like a, a spectrum analyzer style display. That's the theory anyway. OK, so here we've got the uh, a bit of a block diagram of a typical uh, superhet receiver and obviously I've omitted uh, quite a few bits but the bits that matter in terms of aligning the IF stages are here. So we've got the signal coming in probably from a stage of RF amplification. Uh, there's a mixer here uh, and that mixes the RF in with the local oscillator and the output of that 
um, well, it's several things, but one of the outputs of that is that, in the case of this radio, 465 kilohertz, which is the intermediate frequency. These IF stages are intended to filter out the unwanted frequencies and to centre the, if you like, the response on the middle of the intermediate uh, frequency. And then the detector converts the um, signal that's been output into to audio frequency so that we can then amplify it and hear it. So what I'm essentially doing here is I'm feeding in a swept frequency from my signal generator. I'm feeding it in somewhere here so that it goes straight into the IF stage and then I'm listening with the oscilloscope effectively here beyond the uh, detector. I'm actually, for the um, because it's easier, I'm actually listening uh, in the IF stages but it's the same thing really. And although the energy level of the signal going in is constant across the swept range. Because of the filtering effects of the IF stage we should effectively then see a curve which um, in, to a greater or lesser extent represents the, the frequency response of the IF stages and hopefully you're going to be able to see that um, in a moment or two. Uh, but that's the, gen the general principle. Okay, so here's the, the general arrangement. Uh, this radio has got an IF of about 465 kilohertz. So I'm feeding uh, swept IF frequency in at the RF stages. And I've got the scope eventually is going to be hooked up to the audio output, which is just here. Um, and hopefully what you'll be seeing is you'll be seeing the effect of that swept frequency after it's passed through the IF chain. Now this is a radio that I have uh, recapped and realigned uh, with a um, reasonable amount of success. So hopefully um, what you're going to see next will uh, will show you how you can potentially use um, your oscilloscope as a Poorman spectrum analyzer. Uh, certainly uh, works for me. So I'm going to just going to move the display now over onto the oscilloscope so you can see what's happening. And I'm firstly going to start by probing the input of the signal here. And then I'm going to be attaching it to the output there so that you can hear or rather you can see the effect um, of the swept signal after it's passed through the, um, the IF stages of the, of the radio. OK, so here is the scope and I'm going to switch on the signal generator now so that the sweep starts you'll hear that coming out the speaker so you can hear it cycling through about uh, 100 kilohertz every second and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the probe onto the input of the signal generator in the RF stages and so what you can see there is you can see the sweep and you can see that the the energy level of the frequencies is pretty much the same, roughly the mid, mid centre of the screen. So the uh, audio, sorry, the signal strength going in is pretty much uh, linear along that central line of the scope. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the scope to the output of the audio stages. And straight away what you can see now is that um, what if you were you might call a normal distribution and it keeps repeating but essentially that's that signal having now passed through the filtering so what you're actually seeing there in each peak is the response of the IF stage. Now just to convince you that uh, it really is the response of the IF stage because I hope to convince myself as well I'm now going to uh, put a um, a little adjuster into one of the uh, coils on the IF stage and I'm going to just adjust it to move it away and as you can see the curve has now dropped down somewhat I've lost the peak and so now I'm going to bring that back up there we go it's coming back up obviously it's the most recent peak you need to look at for the result now you can see it's now it's now back in the very peak, it's just sitting on the top of the screen. So there's no question I'm seeing the, the response there. Um, on the uh, internet example of this, uh, he was able to achieve uh, triggering using the, the trigger output of the 
a signal generator. Uh, my scope for some reason or my signal generator neither of them will actually uh, do that. I have actually got it set to, to internal to external uh, trigger there so I've got to set to trigger type pulse and I've got an external trigger which is coming off the trigger on the uh, on the uh, uh, signal generator. So there you go, poor man spectrum analyzer. Okay, well that's it for uh, another video from uh, Lockdown Electronics. Hope it's uh, been enjoyable and possibly even useful. Um, want to record my thanks to Dave Jones of EEV Blog. Uh, I'll put a link again down below. Uh, whose video from uh, actually right back in 2012 gave me the idea to have a go at this. Uh, he's got a lot better equipment than me and uh, does a very nice explanation of, uh, of what I've been trying to replicate here. Uh, so hopefully um, you can have a look at that and it'll hopefully make sense. Um, if you've enjoyed it, it would be great if you could click that thumbs up, uh, that would help me. Um, and like the video, um, even better if uh, you could stand to subscribe, that would be great. Um, very new to this YouTube lark, so uh, keen to try and build up uh, uh, a few viewers. Um, if I don't get many viewers, that probably means that um, the content isn't worth viewing. Um, hopefully that's not going to be the case. Anyway, thanks very much and uh, we'll see you at the next one.